I love Gorka Morka. Crazy vehicles, the over the top scenarios, the nonsensical work politics. It's great. And it leads to a lot of really zany games. And since the game has been out of print since the 90s, Planet Today requires a lot of converting and scratch building models. My favorite kind of game. My good friend Cygnus invited me to start a Gorkamorka campaign with him a while back, which was loads of fun. In the dramatic climax of one of the games, my mob reached out with a hydraulic arm, grabbed the gunner out of a rival mob's truck, and sped off towards our ramshackle fortress deep in the desert. Unfortunately, while Cygnus made a lot of amazing terrain for the campaign, we didn't actually have a fort, so we had to improvise one for the ensuing rescue mission. The original box set came with a pretty sweet cardboard fort. Guy from Midwinter Minis has an excellent video on the original Gork Morka box where he buys a brand new box off eBay and builds the classic fort. You should go check it out. I, of course, always intended to build my mob a proper fort from scratch, but didn't manage to get around to it in time for the campaign. To be ready for the next one, I set myself the goal of finishing the fort during the month of Orktober. Orktober 2019, that is. To be fair, I did have a basic fort put together by the end of the month, but it didn't quite live up to my original vision. And since I'm all about overthinking things and doing them in the least efficient way possible, I decided that if I'm going to do a job, might as well make it a good one. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back a bit. To come up with the design for my Orky fort, my first step was to look at the source material. In addition to the actual fort included in the box set, you see a few forts in the game's artwork though they don't always feature that prominently. In fact, there's a fort on the front of the box. It's mostly covered up by the logo, but you can see it clearly in the original illustration. You can also see the forts the studio team built in a few of the photos in the rulebooks. There are a few common design features that begin to emerge as you look across the artwork. The general layout of the forts is usually pretty boxy, the actual cardboard fort being a bit of an outlier, with its relative scarcity of right angles and its little protruding bastion. The walls all have ramparts with some form of spiky triangular crenellations. Big square towers are common, as are truss or scaffold towers built on top of other buildings. There's often a lot of visible machinery like hooks, chains, gears, and cranes. Sometimes it looks functional, other times it looks like it's been broken for quite a while, or salvaged to build something completely different. Every fort has a windmill for power, because you can't run a machine shop without electricity, and orcs all agree that green is best. Due to the background of the setting, wood is fairly uncommon, as is anything beyond 20th century levels of technology, so your average fort isn't going to have any plasma generators or lasers, just your standard Mad Max amenities. Walls tend to be reinforced with chunky square or triangular armor plates, bolted on in a fairly regular order, though you do see some structures like the walls of Mechtown that have much more irregularly shaped armor panels. You also occasionally see other fortifications like barbed wire, fences, and improvised barricades, especially in the studio's scratch-built forts. In addition to fitting the overall Gorkamorka aesthetic, there are also practical considerations. Mainly, I wanted the whole fort to be modular, just like my vehicles. This would help with storage, but it would also allow the fort to be customized for different scenarios, or for different mobs, since we definitely didn't need everyone in the campaign building their own massive personalized fort. I decided to divide the fort up into eight wall sections, six inches long, four inches high, and two inches deep, with towers on the corners where they meet. Although I liked the idea of adding 45 degree pieces at some point to get more interesting designs, like the cardboard fort, I decided to keep things <coughs> simple to start with. The 2 inch depth also gave me some space under the ramparts that I could use to add details to the fort like storage, beds, and tools. In the end, I decided on giving my fort two storage areas, a workshop, some sleeping space, a fuel depot, some plumbing, some electrical equipment, and a gate. Also, since my gang was the most obsessed with vehicles and gubbins of any in our campaign, I wanted them to be based out of a remote fort on the far side of the skid, where the grots are unruly and the Spanner boys are even more eccentric than usual. I decided that their fort should be built up against the side of an especially large chunk of the Ulk that had long since been stripped of any useful scrap, which eventually became one of the corner pieces. That part wouldn't make as much sense for the other mobs in the campaign, but if they didn't like it, they only needed to build one section of the fort for themselves to have their own custom fort. With the plans for the fort in order, it was time to get building. As I mentioned before, I kind of rushed through the initial construction of the fort, which is also why I have so little footage of this phase. But the basics were all there, 
The walls were built out of standard pink Formular XPS foam with a chipboard base. The armor panels were built using chipboard and assorted cereal boxes. I used various pieces of plastic mesh to make the walkways along the ramparts. I added some sand and PVA glue in a few spots as well, to make a heavily corroded texture that could add rust effects to during the final paint job. I also added some lead weights to the bottom, so that there wasn't any chance of some of the more top-heavy walls tipping over once you set miniatures on top. I made the fuel tank out of a narrow soda can, but since I'm pretty obsessed with making my terrain as durable as possible, I made sure to fill it with expanding foam before adding it to the fort. It's still not immune to being dented, but it should be at least as durable as the rest of the wall section. I built the chunk of the elk using a bunch of broken nerf guns and water pistols. The chunk was definitely a chaotic mess, but it actually made a decent crashed spaceship part once it was all primed. Even though the fort was technically finished, and even had a few coats of paint in time for our next Gorkamorka event, I wasn't really happy with it. It had the basic silhouette I was going for, but it didn't have any of the orky details to make it fit in on a Gorkamorka table. And thus began the four year journey to turn the fort into something proper orky. Pretty much every part of the fort got some additional details. The outer walls got more chains and gears to make it look a bit like the remnants of old machinery that broke down and were just left kind of in place. It was much easier to attach new bits to the chipboard because many glues will melt from Milan, which can make it difficult to add details to the surface. PVA glue is still safe though, and chipboard sucks up PVA really well, making it a pretty decent bond. Unfortunately, chipboard also has a lot of downsides, such as warping when it gets wet and leaving much softer edges when you cut it, which makes it harder to pass off as metal parts. I ended up transitioning to using mostly plastic card as the project went on, and even went back and replaced a bunch of the chipboard and cereal box in some places. Smooth plastic card surfaces don't bond quite as well with PVA though, so I had to stick it to the foamulus with two-part epoxy in some places, which was a lot more work. The utility sections of the wall mostly got detailed with various types of plastic card, as well as some bits from my bits box. There are a few more eclectic bits as well, such as a chunk of a model railroad car, some Lego steering wheels, and a few drinking straws. The rivets and bolts are mostly made from tiny hex nuts, glass beads, uh, though a few of them are actual nails that I used to attach the bits to the underlying XPF foam structure. I also inadvertently melted a bit of the foam with superglue in a few places, which required some appropriately orky repair jobs. I was especially pleased with how these big electrical panels turned out. Not bad for mostly scratch building. The fuel tank got some additional details as well. Added plenty of pipes on the inside, mostly made from some kids' building sets. I actually went through a number of these sets before settling on this one. But the other side joints are made from more bendable rubber-like materials. Again, since durability is an important factor for me, I tried to avoid bendable components that could flex and crack off their paint. My spanner's spare parts came from the various scrap piles you get in the orc terrain kits. I made quite liberal use of the scrap piles in orky barricades as I was adding detail to all the wall sections, but this one in particular. My fort also needed some additional supplies like food and ammo, and booze, to keep the mob running. So I made another little spot for stashing supplies behind one of the walls. I ended up making more storage crates than would actually fit behind the wall, so they might not all make it into the finished product. But I like how they turned out. My original plan had a place for beds and hammocks under the walls for the grots and youths that didn't have the privilege of sleeping in a nice warm vehicle, but it ended up turning into a bit more of a shantytown built into the walls, which I like the idea of. This section is mostly built from the Mech Boy Workshop terrain set, though it did take a bit of work to take the freestanding workshop and build it into the existing wall of the fort. I also added a few spots where hydraulic arms can be mounted when they're not being used as govens for part of a vehicle. I've now magnetized all the wall sections of my fort, because of course I have. They're a bit easier to magnetize than all the fiddly little govens I made for my vehicles. They also snap together in a very satisfying way. Ah. I ended up completely scrapping the original gate section and building a new one from scratch. My original gate was built from XPS foam and had a drawbridge style gate that was essentially held in place by friction, so I couldn't really add any additional detail to the parts that had to fit together. Since I couldn't really make the foam any thinner without compromising its already weak structure, I opted to build the structural framework out of some aquarium filters. Though they're not made of the most rigid plastic, their grid structure made them pretty stable, except for the joints. Still a definite step up from the foam. Also the grid made it super easy to add the magnets. The doors themselves were also based on the aquarium grating. I built some hinges out of plastic card rod that would allow the doors to swing open for my vehicles or to be removed if a band of muties decides to blow them up during a siege. I also added a nice bulkhead door from Necromunda as a wicket gate, since I wouldn't think that they'd want to open and close the gates every time a monster came in or out. The framework of the door can be seen from the back, and I made sure to add plenty of bolts as well. I also added a few big chunks of detail in the corners to help shore up those joints against cheering forces. 
Again, since the fort is modular and meant to be used by all the mobs in our group, I didn't want to put any specific identifying details to tie to my mob. Instead, I added some magnets above the gate, so that whichever mob is using the fort can have their insignia showing. I'm quite pleased with how my mob's sign turned out. Unsurprisingly, I wasn't content with just changing every part of the fort. I also had to add entirely new parts. I built a little watchtower out of plastic card. I made the base of the watchtower slightly smaller than the top of my fort's other towers, so that I can have towers on my towers. I also made magnetized ladders to get up to the ramparts. Magnets! Finally, and most importantly, my fort finally has a windmill. The windmill is modular and it can fit on a tower or on the watchtower. It's now officially a Gorkamorka fort. So there you go. Construction is complete and the next step is to get the fort painted and on the table. Once again, I didn't get it done quite as soon as I was hoping. But as they say, it's always October somewhere. Stay tuned to hopefully see this thing actually finished. Eventually.